I'm Brian Pelker from Eppingham. P O E L K E R. You've already got me. Yeah. Pardon me. Just a couple of things. When I read over the, or just a couple of points to me, it seems like we're talking, a lot of people mentioned the um, fines. Uh, on page 127, it says the department may assess the penalty for administrative violations. And uh, I underlined the word may there because there's a real possibility that no fine may be assessed as small as it may be. Uh, I do have a concern about uh, the earthquake problems in southern Illinois with the, with the fall lines. Uh, seems like if there's a magnitude 5 fault or earthquake and uh, there's a fracking operation within six miles of that thing, that's a serious problem. And it shouldn't be left up to the operators to decide whether to um, continue the operations or not. Um, thank you. Thank you, sir. Do you want to make a comment, sir? Come on down. Hello and good evening. My name is Matthew Steffen. That's M A T T H E W. Last name is spelled S T E F F E N. Um, and I would also like to echo comments made earlier this evening um, regarding the treatment of radioactive waste um, that is an inevitable um, symptom of hydraulic fracturing. Um, I believe it's section 245.850. Um, and I think that this waste should be treated as low-level radioactive waste, and it's very important that that type of waste receives the proper treatment and isn't treated as just regular um, water waste from a fracking operation. Um, so that's my request, and thank you for having us. All right, thank you, sir. Anybody else? <laughs> a few minutes left. If, if not, um, the uh, Can you council make here. Additional comment? I'm sorry. Can you make additional comment? Uh, well, we got we got 20 minutes. Don't jump up here and uh, no. close the All right. Okay. What's we, your name again? Jerwane Baker. Jerwane. Yeah, I'm sorry. G I R W A N A Baker B A K E R. Um, listening to people comments, we've heard all the catastrophes and all the bad things that will happen um, due to fracking. We know this. Um, to me, it just seems very important to see that you guys are just like us. Even though that we have this board of six people and we're here in this room asking for you guys to please, please stop fracking. You're just like us, you know what I'm saying? Like, without the suits, without the board, we're, we're in this together. This is our world. It's not just us here in this room. It's our world. And I feel like it's very important for us um, to, well, I feel like it's very important for you guys in a position to, um, where you can hurt or affect people's lives, that you can take that initiative and change the world. I mean, initially, if I was in your position, I would want to change the world as much as possible. And you're in the position to do just that. And I can't say that being in your position is easy, listening to people, thousands of comments is easy, going to hearings is easy. I'm not saying that it's easy, and I know that it's hard. But you chose the job, you know what I'm saying? And I respect it a little bit uh, for you even taking on the responsibility to listen to us. In other words, I want to say just truly take into consideration how fracking is really going to affect people's lives. Seriously, you have that power, use that power. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Baker, uh, for recognizing that we're humans and we have families. And, and this yes, sir, it's true that I've spoken before. And my name is still Elmer Fugman, F-U-G-M-A-N, as it was before. And I just want to make uh, the following promise to uh, the constituents of uh, the state of Illinois. Uh, I intend to bombard my state representative and state senator 
to the effect that they repeal the law that allows fracking. That's my statement. Thank you, sir. Call Mr. Ho, he's been bouncing up and down here. But. He can go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, you haven't spoken yet? Just one sweet comment. I have to address the name. More and more. <laughs> Tabitha Tripp, T A B I T H A T R I P P. And I respectfully request that you extend the comment period. Because simply, I'm going to miss out on my daughter's Christmas party and my son's Christmas performance, holiday performance, whatever PC you want to use, to go to hearings, to stand up for people in Illinois to tell you that these rules are hideous. They've got huge holes in them. So I respectfully request that you extend this comment period past the holiday season so we can actually spend time with our families. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Um, well, I think I actually to just list of my name's Kelvin, K-E-L-V-I-N, my last name's Ho. So I could actually probably speak here for hours and probably I would fill no, my no, time. Can't. Right. <laughs> so I could probably fill my time just by listing out the chemicals that aren't included in, in the water testing standards that were actually mandated by the Act. But currently, the water testing only um, um, mandates that uh, a couple in indicator, indicator chemicals be tested in the water testing. Whereas in the act, there's a list of almost 100 different chemicals that ought to be tested that are the actual cause of the water pollution. So I can start listing them now. Um, let's see, antimony, beryllium, Wait, cobalt, co copper. Start again. Okay. Antimony, see. beryllium, cobalt, copper, cyanide, fluoride, nickel, Florida. nitrate, Florida. fluorate. Florida. Okay. You really want to read all those? Well. There's over a hundred of them. And so I think that's a good indication of why we need more public hearings and, and extending the comment process, because there's simply way too many things to talk about in these rules. Like I have a 50 pager here of all the things that are wrong with the rules, and like there's, no, there's not enough time to talk about all these. Like the chemicals that not, alone will probably take like 15 or 20 minutes to read off. It's completely ridiculous. Um, like, I mean, maybe I'll talk about a couple other changes in terms of the, just in terms of a water pollution. In section 245.620B2, the word the before baseline water quality data should be stricken to make, make clear that any baseline water quality data, not just the data collected pursuant to the act's requirement, may trigger the presumption of water pollution. In section 245.620B4, this section should be amended to mirror subparagraph B2 uh, to state that water quality data obtained um, up to 30 months after commencement of hydraulic fracking operations shows that pollution or dim diminution of water quality has occurred with respect to one or more parameters set forth in the re relevant section in the EPA regulations referenced in the Act 245.610E. 245.620C4. This section is completely superfluous. Um, it's confusing for the um, reasons specified. Um, if the water quali quality data um, does not show pollution or diminution, then there's no pre um, presumption to rebut. The, the relevant concept um, from the statute that should be reflected here, and it's not, is from section 1-85C3, specifying the presumption can be rebutted if it can be affirmatively established that the pollution or diminution had an identifiable cause other than hydraulic fracturing operations. Something else that wasn't mentioned today was that currently, um, or probably was mentioned in previous hearings, is like water testing right now is done only 1,500 feet within the well site. Horizontal, the horizontal bores of these wells extend for miles on end, and th that has an equal chance of causing water pollution. Why is there no testing around these horizontal wells? Um, 1,500 feet is already way too short. Like other states have like um, up to one to three miles within this radius. There should be a radius around every, every single point along these horizontal wells a 1,500 feet radius or more should be um, tested for water pollution, just like anyone within that radius should also be able to testify at hearings around these issues. There's simply way too many issues to like mention in these comments. I, I mean, I can go on about like well integrity standards that um, there's no no mention of. Um, I mean, let me see. I mean, there's just way too much. Okay, well, surface casing requirements, section 245.530A. The, the requirement that surf, surface facing be set to a depth prior to the encountering of any hydrocarbon bearing zones, the department should require that if such zones are encountered, 
Drilling must stop and surface casing must be set or cemented before drilling deeper. These regulations should further require that all such zones be recorded to the department. Um, borehole circulation. The Wait, department. Yeah, you're going too fast. Circulation the borehole circulation, section 245.530D. Oh, 10 seconds. The department should require that the applicant circulate at least two whole volumes of drilling fluid and ensure that the well is static and all gas flows are killed. There's a whole list of these standards that need to be specified in the rules in which there's no mention of. Like, that's going to take pages and, and hours of, co of like comments to actually specify all these standards, and there's no time to do this. We have 45 days. How, how, are, we, how are we expected to like uh, provide all these comments? There should be, we need way more time. And honestly, like this should not be the public's responsibility. Before these rules are released, all of this should have been done. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, DIG, ARD. I'm kind of hoarse, so bear with me. I've been in the oil business since 1975. I've never had a job since uh, high school because I've worked for myself. I started the business from scratch, started the oil business from scratch, drilled wells. I owned a manufacturing business in the oil field. And I feel like that. Uh, People are failing to realize that Illinois is made up of small business, not just big oil companies. It's not all big oil companies. There's a lot of mom and pop operations that are trying to survive, and the regulations right now are so burdensome, I'm ready to sell out and quit. And I, 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 don't, I'm not, I'm not quit. I don't give up. I'm quitting because the regulations are too stringent for little guys. They, they put a burden on the oil and gas. The oil and gas industry has got such a burden from regulatory agencies that we can't hardly operate. And I'm selling out because I'm tired of the regulations. Every year we get notices, you've got 10 days to respond, 30 days to respond, it's not enough time for little guys. We just can't hack it. You're gonna see little guys fold up and quit. And now that happens, all you're gonna have is big companies. And I'm one of the little guys, but I'm tired, I'm quitting. It's over. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Well, all right, uh, we want to thank you.